हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे राधा कृष्ण चंद्र राधा कृष्ण चंद्र राधा कृष्ण चंद्र जय राधे राधा कृष्ण चंद्र राधा कृष्ण चंद्र राधा कृष्ण चंद्र जय राधे कृष्ण बल कृष्ण बलराम जय वृंदावन धाम कृष्ण बलराम जय कृष्ण बलराम कृष्ण बलराम जय वृंदावन धाम गौरनिता जय गौरनिता गौरनिता जय गौरनिता जय गौरनिता जय
ಸಾಂ ವಿಶ್ವಕ್ಸೇನ ಕಥಾಸು ಯಹ ನೋತ್ಪಾದೆಯೇತ್ ಯದಿರತಿ ಶ್ರಮ ಎವ ಹಿ ಕೇವಲಂ ದ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ವರ್ಸಸ್ ದಿ ಆಕ್ಯುಪೇಷನಲ್ ಆಕ್ಟಿವಿಟೀಸ್ ಎ ಮ್ಯಾನ್ ಪರ್ಫಾರ್ಮ್ಸ್ ಅಕಾರ್ಡಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಹಿಸ್ ಓನ್ ಪೊಸಿಷನ್ ಆರ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಸೋ ಮಚ್ ಯೂಸ್ಲೆಸ್ ಲೇಬರ್ ಇಫ್ ದೇ ಡೂ ನಾಟ್ ಪ್ರೊವೋಕ್ ಅಟ್ರಾಕ್ಷನ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಮೆಸೇಜ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಪರ್ಸನಾಲಿಟಿ ಆಫ್ ಕಾಡೆಡ್ ಧರ್ಮ ದ ಆಕ್ಯುಪೇಷನಲ್ ಡ್ಯೂಟೀಸ್ ಒನ್ ಎಸ್ ಟು ಪರ್ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಧರ್ಮ ಸ್ವನುಷ್ಠಿತ ಪುಂಸಾಂ ದ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಪರ್ಫಾರ್ಮ್ಸ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಓನ್ ಆಕ್ಯುಪೇಷನಲ್ ಡ್ಯೂಟೀಸ್ ಅಕಾರ್ಡಿಂಗ್ ಟು ದ ಪ್ರಿಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರ ಸ್ಟಿಲ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಕನ್ಸಿಡರ್ಡ್ ಆಸ್ ಶ್ರಮ ಎವ ಹಿ ಕೇವಲಂ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಸಿಂಪ್ಲಿ ಯೂಸ್ಲೆಸ್ ಲೇಬರ್ ಇಫ್ by performing such duties one does not develop a uh, vishwaksena kathasu ratim attraction for hearing the uh, pastimes of the supreme personality of godhead who is also called vishwaksena so shrila prabhupad explains in the purport about occupational activities he says there are different occupational activities in terms of a person's different conceptions of life what's the meaning of conception of life he gives uh, an example shrila prabhupad gives an example there are the gross materialists who consider the material body that we have this external gross body as all in all i am this body this is their concept of who they are or what is life all about just their body that's all so for them there is nothing beyond this body body consists of senses so they are simply uh concerned with uh sense satisfaction whatever activity they may do they want to satisfy their gross senses now there are two kinds of selfishness that trila prabhupa describes here concentrated selfishness and extended selfishness you understand what is the meaning of selfishness selfishness means i am concerned with my happiness only or my satisfaction or my comfort or my well being that's all that is selfishness now concentrated selfishness means i am interested in my body i am interested only in my bodily comfort my bodily happiness my sense satisfaction that's all extended selfishness is because i consider not only my body as important but also i have got my family members my wife or my children or my father or my mother so they also are included in uh, my uh, well being their satisfaction is also of importance for me to be happy so this is called extended selfishness that means not only my body but the body of my parents my family members so extending this one can keep on extending the selfishness beyond one's immediate body to uh family society community nation the whole world all simply for gross bodily comfort if their extended selfishness is uh limited to the family then they want family members to be happy to be comfortable to be enjoying life 
to satisfy their senses. If their conception of life is the society, then they want to extend it to the society, this bodily comforts. If it is community, then they want to extend to the community or nation, if they have national feeling, all my countrymen should be happy, should be enjoying life, should be having sense gratification. Or sometimes people have a conception of the whole world, humanity. But in any case, this is uh, a gross bodily concept. They only understand people as having this body, that's all. Body is the self, nothing beyond the body. Now, above these gross materialists are the mental speculators. These mental speculators, they are concerned with occupational duties which involve making some poetry or philosophy or propagating some ism, socialism, communism or um, um, uh, humanitarianism like that. Uh, the same aim of selfishness limited to the body and mind, there is the only difference. They are concerned not only with the gross body but with also the mind within. Now, beyond this body and mind is the spirit soul, the real self. Now, the spirit soul actually is the most important. But people, uh, they don't consider or neglect completely the spirit soul. Now, if the spirit soul is absent from this body and mind system, all range of activities of this body and mind become totally useless, null and void. There will be no more activity possible if the soul is missing, if the spirit soul is missing in this body. That's what happens when a person dies. But less intelligent people don't have information of the spirit soul. So they don't understand what is the need of the spirit soul. They don't understand that. They don't consider that. So therefore, when they try to derive satisfaction out of performing their occupational duties, every time they fail to get real satisfaction, whether it is the satisfaction of their own self, which is the body or their mind or the body and mind of their family members or of their community, of their nation, of the world, they can never satisfy uh, because they are missing the most important part of this entire uh, living system, the spirit soul. Now, in, a previ in previous two, three verses, it was uh, explained that one has to satisfy the real self of the soul. Yen atma suprasidati. Now, the soul is beyond the body and the mind. The soul is the active principle within the body and the mind. Now, without understanding what is the need of the spirit soul, one can never be happy simply by trying to satisfy the body or even the mind, either oneself, one's own body and mind or somebody else's body and mind. That is not the real person, that is not the real self. So, the body and mind are specifically described in the scriptures as coverings for the spirit soul. So, one should be actually trying to understand what is the need of the spirit soul, either my uh, self, my real self, my soul or I. I means the spirit soul or somebody else as soul. What is their need? So there is an example given here. 
simply by cleansing the cage of a bird, one does not satisfy the bird. One must actually know that the bird will be happy when the bird is fed, when the bird is taken care of. Not just polishing the cage, keeping the cage very clean, keeping the cage very nicely. That's not enough. Uh, similarly, within this body and mind is the spirit soul who wants to get out of the limited sphere of material bondage. The body and the mind, since they are coverings for the spirit soul, a person will always feel the limitation of this material bondage and wants complete freedom from this bondage. And Prabhupada says here that the soul wants to get out of the covered walls of the greater universe. This universe is a dark place, a place filled with ignorance because of the seven layers of covering. There are seven layers of covering. So the soul wants to get out of these coverings and see the free light and the spirit. Now complete freedom for the soul is achieved only when the soul meets the supreme spirit, the supreme personality of God. Why? Because there is a relationship, an eternal relationship. There is eternal existence in that relationship with the Supreme Lord for every soul, for every person, for every living being. So, inside the heart, uh, there is the uh, dormant affection for God or Krishna in everybody's heart, it is there. But in our present condition, what is happening? Our spiritual existence is expressed through the body and the mind. So what we should really do is engage in some activity which will awaken our divine consciousness. And how can this be done? This can only be done by hearing and chanting about the divine or spiritual activities of the transcendental Lord, of the Supreme Lord, of Krishna. And if there is some activity anybody is doing which does not awaken this dormant uh, attraction, uh, for the hearing and chanting about the activities of the Lord, then all such activities are useless labor. They are simply a waste of time. So one cannot get real satisfaction, inner satisfaction, or one cannot get liberation if one does not engage in activities which will awaken our dormant Krishna consciousness. Even those who are after uh, liberation by merging into Brahman or Brahma Jyoti, even they are unable to satisfy the real soul or the real self because they are unable to understand that satisfaction will only be possible if they establish that relationship with the Supreme Personality of God. Their individual relationship with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Until they establish that, they'll never be happy. They'll never be happy in, inside. Uh, and especially the materialists, if they become little old and mature, they can realize that all the material benefits or the material gain or material enjoyment is limited to this body, existence in this body and this body is going to be finished. Sometime a person will realize I have to leave this body and go away. So uh, one will never get real satisfaction. Even if one goes to Swargaloka or even higher planets than that, only way to get real satisfaction 
is to render devotional service to Krishna, especially beginning with hearing and chanting Krishna's name, form, qualities, pastimes, his paraphernalia, his abode, his devotees, his activities, his descriptions. We have to um, engage in such hearing and chanting. So that is the um, that is the purport of this verse. Vishwaksena kathasu yaha na utpadayet yadiratim shrama evahi chet. I will take some questions now. I have received Harinam Diksha four years back and I am practicing Krishna consciousness for the last ten years. Now how can I become a Vipra, a Brahmana and finally a Vaishnava? Now that uh, levels were explained to help us understand that there is a gradual path of development in Krishna consciousness and there is a direct path. Now if somebody is taking to the path of Krishna consciousness development, that is the direct path. In the direct path from day one, when you begin chanting Hare Krishna, even before you take Diksha, you are already a devotee. You are already a devotee. You understood that I am spirit soul. I have got a relationship with the Supreme Lord Krishna. And in that relationship, my activity should be centered around that relationship. And such activities are called devotional service, which will actually um, awaken our dormant uh, love for Krishna, which is already there in the heart. It's already there in the consciousness. So when we begin chanting Hare Krishna, the chanting itself, the name of the Supreme Lord, when it is vibrated by the tongue, immediately a connect is made between our self, our real self and Krishna. Krishna is present as, this, as the Supreme Soul uh, in the form of the transcendental vibration of His name. He is present in the descriptions about his activities given in the Bhagavatam. He is present in the instructions he is giving in the Bhagavad Gita. All these uh, transcendental vibrations of the Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavatam, even the entire Vedas, Puranas, Itihasas, everything is Krishna Katha, is actually what we should get attracted by what we should hear about, what we should chant, what we should uh, remember. Uh, uh, there will be verses that will describe this particular importance of hearing and cultivating this, uh, culturing this practice of hearing and chanting about Krishna. So, in this process of uh, uh, taking up Krishna consciousness, one should actually uh, simply uh, engage in devotional service and that is enough. A devotional service means you immediately are a Vaishnava. You don't have to go through stages of uh, uh, becoming a Vipra, a Brahmana and then a Vaishnava. No, directly Vaishnava, directly your Vaishnava. Of course, to reach the perfection of Vaishnava um, status, it takes time. But in any case, when you are chanting, when you are hearing, you are engaged in devotional service, you are situated in Krishna consciousness, that is the, that is the real uh, state of uh, uh, perfection, uh, that you have already achieved to a limited degree in the beginning and you have to only increase that. Next question, who constructed Jagannath temple? Was it King Pradyumna? No, Jagannath temple was, const was constructed by uh, one King Indradyumna. Of course, King Indradyumna constructed the temple several. Uh, many kings would have come and gone in the last uh, so many years. 
So the recent, the temple which is now standing was built sometime in the 12th century, about 800 years back and it is a stone structure and uh, that, temp that spot is where Jagannath has been worshipped since Satya Yuga, since he appeared to that uh, great uh, devotee king Rajarshi Indra Dhyumna. And as you might be aware, the deity of Jagannath every 12 years, 12 to 15 years, it is changed. So like that, the deity is changed, the temple is rebuilt uh, or renovated or it is completely uh, new temple is constructed when the old temple becomes dilapidated like that. That is happening. And who constructed the Jagannath temple which is now standing there? It is Ananga Bhima one king in the 12th century in uh, Orissa, that king has built it. Next question, in the purport of 112 Bhagavatam, it is mentioned that by understanding one uh, simultaneously one and different from the Lord. One is, that means I am simultaneously one and different from the Supreme Lord Krishna. Brings one to the stage of freedom from threefold miseries, tapatraya unmulanam. How does it happen? Now, there it is explained in the verse itself that um, uh, Dharma projita kaitavo atra paramo nirmatsaranam satam vedyam vastam atra vastu shivadam tapatrayo muranam. If you understand that um, uh, what is the actual truth about the self, who you are. You are spirit soul and you are not the body, you are not the mind and you uh, have a relationship, a connection with the supreme soul Krishna and you are part of Krishna, you belong to Krishna and you have got in relationship with Krishna, you have got certain activities and understanding of this truth and realizing the truth by engaging in such activities which are activities of devotional service immediately brings you to the spiritual existence transports you from material existence to spiritual existence when you come to spiritual existence it's called brahma bhuta existence in which there are no miseries at all because you are transcendental to the body and the mind and it's possible through consciousness, through Krishna consciousness to realize this state. So therefore it is said, uh, when you understand you belong to Krishna, you don't belong to this material world. And Krishna means Krishna's uh, uh, spiritual existence. Krishna is only in the spiritual dimension. He is not in the material uh, existence. Krishna is not in material existence. So, we are foolishly entangled in this material existence because of this material body and mind which, with which we try to enjoy life. So, give up this business of material enjoyment, engage in devotional service, try to, uh, try to understand this spiritual life, spiritual existence and in that way you can gradually come out of uh, material existence altogether in course of time. Who are Sahajiyas? Sahajiyas are people who are interested in spiritual life but they want to make it very cheap, very, very, uh, they want to uh, experience prematurely all the perfections of devotional service. Just like scriptures describe if somebody chants Hare Krishna purely, then they are able to experience ecstasy of bhakti, bhava, it's called bhava. But that ecstasy takes time. You have to purify your consciousness. Anybody who wants to experience the ecstasy of devotional service, of chanting, hearing, has to actually purify the heart. Without purification of heart, somebody tries to imitate and get some so-called feeling of ecstasy. That is that imitation is useless. It will simply be an imitation. That's all. Uh, just like sometimes people uh, they think that I am now feeling 
some kind of uh, attraction for Krishna within my heart or within the description of Krishna, I become very much attracted or attached to Krishna and then I feel that Krishna is reciprocating. All these are imaginary things people try to imagine and try to uh, mentally uh, concoct some kind of experience and sometimes they imitate also. Uh, all that is not going to help. Such imitators, uh, those who imagine, those who prematurely try to experience something, they are all uh, called Sahajiyas. Next question. Uh, verse 7 says that one immediately acquires causeless knowledge and detachment from the world by devotional service to the Lord. How to understand this? It doesn't happen in practical life. Now, when that uh, verse says, Vasudeve Bhagavati Bhakti Yoga Prayojitaha, you have to execute devotional service to Supreme Lord Krishna Vasudeva uh, according to the standard. What is the standard of devotional service to develop this uh, detachment and knowledge immediately? It is Ahaituki Apratihata, pure devotional service. So that is standard of pure devotional service. Pure devotional service takes time. Without any material motivation to do devotional service to Krishna, without any interruption, nirantara, continuous devotional service to Krishna. So that takes some time. So you have to practice. You begin by doing little devotional service. And then you increase devotional service that you do to Krishna. As you keep on increasing, and purify uh, your uh, self, your consciousness. Then with purified consciousness, when you render service to Krishna, that is actually pure devotion. It takes time. One of the quality of devotee is poet. Then is those songs are also mental speculation or bodily satisfaction. Uh, Poet means, Kavi, devotee's poet means when he has purified his heart and with pure consciousness, a pure heart, he is expressing uh, his devotional um, feelings in his uh, relationship with Krishna in the form of poetry, or in the form of words that he expresses, he composes or he writes such poems. So those are written by a pure devotee that is of value for everyone else, including the devotee himself. Just like Vyasa's composition of Bhagavata, pure devotee. Vyasa is the incarnation of the Lord, but he is also pure devotee. So when he writes, every word is uh, very, very valuable, very valuable. Hmm? Or um, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, has described uh, bhakti in Shikshashtaka or the Goswamis have written so many books. Great Acharyas, they write, pure devotees, they write books, they glorify. Acharyas have written songs, Narottam Das Thakur, Bhakti Vinod Thakur. Those are actually poetry which we should be uh, singing, which we should be understanding, which we should be uh, trying to Offer to the Lord like that. So I'll stop here. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna.